then the publication followed with the EMA publication for the guideline on process validation for finished product. And the WHO in 2015 published the TRS 99, uh, 992 Annex 3 Appendix 7, which is focusing on the non-sterile process qualification with the three stages concept. And then the EU updated its guideline on 2015 EMA process validation on 2016, and lastly, the ISPE for practical implementation of the life cycle approach to process validation. Although there was a um, few differences between these guidances, maybe in the terminology, the FDA, for example, called the stage three continued process verification, while in EMA, it was called ongoing process verification, so it was minor differences on the um, terminology. Also, some guideline deliberately expressed and explicitly discussed the ex extensive use of statistics on the continuous process verification. Emma has emphasized the link between the process validation and the product dossier, yet they are all having the same concept and expectations were the same. So these expectations can be understood even from the early definition of the process validation. So if we look on the process validation definition, we see uh, that as per the WHO, it's the collection and evaluation of data from the process design stage through to commercial production. So it's not a one-time exercise, it is continuous. It covers the full life cycle of the product starting from the early development and design stages until the product commercial manufacture and it continues as the commercial manufacture continue. Which establish scientific evidence that the process is capable of continuously delivering the finished pharmaceutical product meeting its predetermined specification and quality attribute. So through data, we should demonstrate the process capability and process ability to meet the predetermined specification and critical quality characteristic of the final product. The same definition, almost the same definition was published in EMA that is process validation is a documented evidence that process operated within established parameter. So we have a control on the process parameter and the sources of variability. And that the process can perform effectively and reproducibly to produce a medical product meeting its predetermined specification and quality attributes. FDAs goes with the same direction. So it's establishing documented evidence which provides a high degree of assurance that specific process will consistently produce a product meeting its predetermined specification and quality characteristics. And in the ICH, process validation represents the means of ensuring and providing supporting documents specifying their design parameter by whom they are capable repeatedly and reliably produce a finished product of the required quality. So the expectations are the same. All guidance have expected that the process qualification starts from the design phase the process qualification should ensure that the process will consistently, a batch after batch, will meet its predetermined specification with a demonstration of high assurance that every unit within every batch is meeting this product specification and that the, the process is robust with well-defined parameters. Although these guidances are non-descriptive, but requirement are still the same. And it depends on greatly on process knowledge. So to demonstrate process capability, to demonstrate process reproducibility, 
you need data to show the characteristics of your process. So by this, it was a conceptual shift from the old and traditional concept of validation, which was evolved in 1980s, where we start regularly, manufacturer starts with the development, with the basic development of the product, and then going to the pilot batch manufacturing. If the pilot batch manufacturing met the acceptance criteria and succeeded, then the batch will pass. And if the pilot batch is successful, manufacturer can go directly to the process validation. And in the process validation, it requires that three consecutive batches should be successful. But there was no clear determination of the success criteria. So if one sample pass, the batch will pass. And if that is repeated for three consecutive batches, the validation is considered as successful. But are we certain that these results can be applied on all the unit within the batch or can be applied on the subsequent batches after the validation? That question was not answered with the traditional approach of validation. And then, if any change happened in the post-approval, this may require a revalidation or periodic revalidation. The new guidance actually have do a very drastic conceptual shift. So starting from 2011, it's no more a completed one-way process. It's continuous, ongoing process, focusing on growing and attaining knowledge and understanding the process, sources of variation, output, the capability of the process, starting from the process design, clearly understanding your design, collecting information as much as you can from history, from similar products, and then going to the next phase, using the knowledge gained from the process design, going to the process qualification that is now not limited to the performance qualification batches. It includes all the systems, facilities, and equipment that is involved in the manufacturing of the product. And if we succeed to conduct the process qualification batches, then we can go to the continued validation. So after validation, monitoring, trending, and vigilance of the process is never ended. We go for continued validation to obtain more data, have a real-time decisions regarding the batch that may give further knowledge further opportunities for continuous improvement of the product. So it never ends in its ongoing process. To have more clear picture of the variation and sources of the variation in any process and how to control them, any process actually our target and the main goal is to give a consistent output that is meeting the finished product characteristics. It means we have a quality target product profile that is a summary of all the product characteristics, which Based on it, we can come up with the critical quality attributes for the product and product specification where the finished product testing should comply to ensure the product assured quality. And this consistent output is needed 
even if we have a variable inputs. These inputs traditionally were only checked by in-process testing, but now with the current concept of validation, we need to understand these variables and we need to exert controls on the variability associated with different sources. So maybe this variation is coming from the drug substance, from the materials, recipients, adjuvants, any other components like the container closure system. It may come from the facility and equipment operating condition. We may see that the process is having humidity, temperature control, and this humidity and temperature can actually significantly impact the final product specification and critical quality attributes. It may be the environmental containment, human factor, operating or manually interfering with the process. It may be a process parameter from the equipment. Maybe the process is sensitive to the wear and tear of the machine. So we should understand a manufacturer shall study all these sources of variation and ensure that they have a significant impact on the critical quality attributes and define critical material attributes. The, those need to be under control and critical process parameters. And as long as these abbreviations and, and acronyms are very important, so quality target product profile is a summary of the product characteristics. It provides an understanding of what will ensure the quality of the product. It includes the dosage form, the strength, the stability, everything relevant to the product presentation. And then we have the critical quality attributes, which is the physical, chemical, biological, or microbiological property that should be within an appropriate limit, range, or distribution to ensure the desired product quality simply. It's the finished product specification. The important source of variation, which is the critical process parameter. Process parameters whose variability has an impact on the critical quality uh, attribute and therefore should be monitored and controlled to ensure the process produce the desired quality. And the critical material attributes, which is a physical, chemical, biological, or microbiological property of an input material that should be within the appropriate limit ranges or distribution to ensure quality output. So process understanding required understanding all the sources of variation and ensure their contribution and their impact on the final product characteristics. This is by enhanced knowledge and enhanced control, studying your variability, ensuring that these are in control and those within the operating range will not impact the final product quality. By this enhanced knowledge, we can provide the highest assurance that all production batches will consistently have the same efficacy of the clinical batches. We can reduce the risk to safety via the highest assurance of acceptable and consistent quality of the product and its component. And we can maintain and build high assurance with a higher degree of quality of the product, not built based on inspection or testing. It's built on control of the variation sources and insurance of process performance and process capability. Each critical step of the manufacturing should be validated and other steps should be in control. The more we obtain knowledge about the process, 